Hello, hello, and welcome to my guide to abusing your grand company squadron for power leveling your alt jobs. After my recent Sprout class guides, I asked you guys what you wanted me to talk about next, and the results were kind of surprising. Since me having opinions about whether healing is more difficult than tanking, or DPS being the easiest job in the game, is apparently controversial to some people, I will now talk about something instead that no one can really argue with me about, and that is going to be the Grand Company Squadron. In my original leveling guide, I recommended using your Grand Company Squadron for leveling your alts from levels 20 to 50. This surprised a lot of players who had seemingly no idea that this squadron even existed and that you could use it to set your NPCs to offensive mode and deal more damage in dungeons and you can use them to run dungeons very efficiently, which is great for leveling your combat jobs. The squadron is a precursor to the Shadowbringer's trust system and in my opinion 100% better because you have a measure of control over its members beyond just the party composition. This video will serve as a guide to explaining in more depth how exactly I use the squadron for power leveling specifically. I'll go over some of the basic concepts at the start and then primarily focus on my most common use case, which is leveling. There is an excellent in-depth guide to all facets of the squadron by Wes Elber. So if you'd like to min-max your squadron, learn about the optimal chemistries for composition and generally master the feature in itself, I'll have a link in the description below. If at this point you are still not convinced whether it's worth it to spend time developing a squadron and playing with it, here's another thing. By completing a bunch of squadron related achievements, you can unlock four different emotes, breath control, push ups, sit ups and squats, all of which have a fun little animation which can be used in a variety of purposes and for that reason alone I enjoyed playing with a squadron. But yeah, I personally think that the squadron feature is highly highly underrated. I think it's actually one of the best things you can do in the game, especially not just for leveling but also for learning jobs. I wasn't aware of this, but some of my commenters in the tank guide I made were mentioning they learned how to tank by going into dungeons with their Grand Company Squadron. They got to tank in a pretty safe environment, in an environment where there are no real players, which takes some of the pressure away, and they get to make as many mistakes as they want, get used to their rotations, and just not feel threatened by disappointing other players around them. So that's another great use case for the squadron, and if you are looking at learning how to tank and how to heal, and you are completely intimidated by the prospect of going into dungeons with, uh, with strangers, then uh, your squadron is your best bet. Highly recommend it. Now, what I do want to teach in this video is the most brain dead and most straightforward way that I use a squadron, which is just for leveling from level 20 to 60 on my alt jobs. And I think, now that I think about it, I'll call this the brain dead guide to leveling with your squadron because it really isn't that intimidating and it's quite straightforward once you understand the basics. So to get started, you first obviously have to unlock the squadron feature. You need to obtain the rank of second lieutenant in your grand company and complete a blue unlocking quest, which means you'll have to be at least level 47 before getting access to the squadron. Your squadron will start with three members, and you'll need a fourth member before you can, well, do anything, really. You have a chance of recruiting a new squadron member every time you complete an item in your challenge log. I found this process to be rather quick, and got most of my squadron by just completing my weekly gold saucer log. You'll receive a notification that a new member wants to enlist in your squadron and you can review their applications in your squadron headquarter. Now you'll notice that your squadron can hold up to 8 members in its roster, and I do recommend you fill out the roster entirely, but personally I did not think too deeply into who I was recruiting, I just took whichever I didn't have at the time, so I went more for variety over everything. I had one healer, I had two tanks in total, and I have six DPS players now. And um, this allows me to fulfill all of the stat checks that there are in the 18 hour squadron missions when I need to um, need a character in the party that has more tactical ability or more physical ability, depending on what the mission requires. I won't go too deeply into these stat checks and how to pass all the squadron missions, but I'll talk about a tool that helps you get through this in a while. 
I will now spend a couple of minutes walking you through how to get your squadron to the point where you can run command missions and how to get everything set up up until then. If your squadron is already rank 2 or above and you have already gotten access to command missions, you can skip ahead to the next section where we start the setup for actually using the squadron for farming experience. Your squadron starts at rank 0 with all of its members at level 1. After completing the first training mission that you get, start leveling your squad by putting them through training regiments three times per day and sending them on an 18 hour mission every time that you can. Once someone in your squadron has reached level 20, you'll receive a flagged mission which will rank your squadron up to rank 1. Your next rank up missions will come at levels 40 and 50 respectively, with rank 3 being achieved at level 50. Once you reach rank 2, you will unlock command missions which is what we need for our leveling purposes. You might notice that the flag missions you need to complete in order to rank up have specific attribute requirements and these tend to be quite a bit higher than the other missions you might have completed in the past. While you can successfully complete missions with only two of the three attributes met, the chances seem rather low, so I recommend making sure that your squad has all requirements met. It is at this point in time I need to make you aware of a handy dandy website called ffxivsquadron.com. This website makes your life so much easier and you'll thank me for dropping the link in the description below because it'll save you a fuckload of time by doing math for you. Enter your squadron stats, which you can check in the regiment board, and then enter the stats required for the mission that you have to complete, and the website will calculate for you what training to put your squadron through in what order for you to meet all the attribute requirements. It'll try to give you a result within three training sessions, but depending on how scuffed your squadron is, it might take four, five, or six. Okay, at this point, I will assume that you have successfully reached rank two with your squadron, and you can now access command missions, and it's time to get leveling. If there's anything you haven't understood up until this point, and you couldn't figure it out using the Final Fantasy Wiki or, you know, Wesk Albers video or Google, feel free to drop a comment below. Since I primarily use my squadron to level DPS jobs, I'll walk you through how I set up my squadron while playing a DPS job. I use the default Marauder tank Hastaloea as my primary tank. I'll use Cecily, the Conjurer, as my, uh, as my healer. And I'll normally bring an Arcanist as the second DPS role. Why Arcanist? Um, two reasons. One, the Arcanist can do AoE damage, but the Arcanist can also heal in a pinch. It doesn't really matter what DPS role you fill it with, it can be a melee DPS, it can be an archer, it can be whatever you feel like, um, since all jobs have an AoE option. But uh, I did find the Arcanist's ability to heal in a clutch situation to be pretty nice, so that's how I chose them. No real in-depth uh, theory crafting or strategizing. I tried a bunch of the other configurations. I brought a black mage before. They all work, right? There is no, at least to me, no major discernible difference in ability to clear in and how fast you go. This is more a preference and a quality of life thing. And this squad ended up being my highest level uh, units and um, they stuck as my primary way of doing this. One thing I did find in my limited testing is that I prefer a Marauder tank over a Gladiator tank. And this is because the Marauder's AoE ability over power has a 8 yard range versus the, um, the AoE ability from the Gladiator, which is Total Eclipse, which only has 5 yards of range. And overall, I had an easier time funneling mobs into the front of the Marauder for him to tag and get aggro on. But this is ultimately personal preference and entirely up to you really so try both out and see what you like playing with more but uh, i generally use the marauder what is however much more important than composition of your squad is the battle tactics assigned to the members of your squad when you go to the regiment board and open your squadron roster and then select any of your squadron members you will see a bottom left button that's titled display orders this is where you set the battle tactics of your squadron now, the battle tactics are applied individually and they basically give your squadron members a specific stat buff. Each squadron member starts with the independent battle tactic unlocked at mastery level 1. And as you play more with each squadron member in your command missions, they will either rank up in mastery over time or they will unlock new battle tactics for you to use. 
Now the one that you really want is the offensive battle tactic because this is the one that will really elevate your squadron to dealing much more damage than the average, you know, duty roulette group that you might be partied up with. At maximum offensive mastery, each member of your squadron will deal 60% more damage. And this is huge. You'll notice that your squadron is most likely killing things much faster than you are individually capable of. And you know, that makes this quite a bit fun. The balanced battle tactic is also a viable option for your tank, especially if you're struggling to keep your tank alive or if you just need a bit more survivability without sacrificing too much damage. Once you reach offensive mastery level 3, 4 and 5, you'll really feel like your squadron is capable of outperforming the average dungeon group that you might be playing with in a duty roulette or in a regular dungeon queue. Brief summary before we go into actual dungeons. Pick a squad composition that you like and make sure to level up with them. You'll always want to be using your highest level members because they have more abilities at their disposal even when they are synced down to a lower level. Just go with that. Um, as soon as they unlock the offensive battle tactic, assign it to them. And if you want to, feel free to use the balanced one on your tank. And if you have all of that set up, or if, if you're just starting with your independent one, like your, your squad is at a, at a very fresh level, that's okay because we're now ready to go into dungeons to improve our squadron and to, uh, to get faster. So now that your squadron is set up and it's growing and it's leveling along with you, it's time to actually go into dungeons to power level your alt combat jobs with a squadron. There are only 15 dungeons available for command missions and 7 of those are levels 50 and 60 respectively, so we avoid them. If you didn't know, the XP gained in level 50, 60 and 70 dungeons is much lower because those were endgame content in their original releases, meaning they didn't need to provide you with a lot of experience. If all of this is going way over your head, just know that if a dungeon's level is 50, 60 or 70, you want to avoid it if you are here to level quickly. Once you get into a dungeon, your UI will have three additional buttons for you to use. The first one is engage, another one is disengage, slash re-engage, and the last one is limit break. As far as I'm aware, these buttons cannot be assigned to any keybinds, and I've tried a few, so you'll have to manually click them with your mouse. The engage button is the one you'll be using the most, so move the UI window with the commands into a position you're comfortable in for clicking. As the name implies, the engage button orders your squadron to attack whatever enemy you have targeted. This is used in all manner of ways, from picking the first target for your tank to pull, to having the squadron focus their attacks on whatever enemy is targeting you. In this particular case, it's also helpful to have your command buttons close to your enemy list, so you can see which enemies are still attacking you, indicated by the red symbol, and you can quickly select them and issue an engage command. The disengage button is also very straightforward. Your squadron will stop attacking whatever targets they're fighting and regroup with you. To be perfectly honest, there's only one real dungeon where I find this useful, and that's the eye boss in the Gemmel Darkhold. As you can see on the screen, I'm using the disengage button here to ensure my tank pulls the boss into the range of the crystals, which is where the boss has to be for us to deal damage. If you press the disengage button, it changes it to re-engage, which, as you might have guessed, sends your squadron back to attacking whatever they were targeting before you told them to disengage. There are very few instances where I find this button useful, since most of the time I'm near enough to the squadron to not need them to come rushing back to me. The limit break button works quite normally, except it has a couple of differences to our usual limit break. The squad limit break is a whole squad ability, so you can only use it when everyone is alive. Unlike other limit breaks, you want to use your squadron limit break at the start of the fight as it gives you a damage buff that'll increase overall party damage dealt, so that's very useful to have throughout the fight. Additionally, you have to be in combat to use a limit break, which is normal, but your entire squadron has to be in range of the boss, or the target, but I wouldn't recommend using limit break on a regular mob because this limit break is also single target damage, no AoE. For the last part of this video, I want to talk about some tips and tricks to make the dungeon experience easier and more bearable. Let's talk about pulling with your squadron. Some people express frustration at being unable to pull big, but it's not that hard. The secret is that you don't pull for the tank. Just keep sending your tank to engage from pack to pack, and he'll start using his AoE abilities, getting aggro on most enemies. 
Once your tank has grouped them all up, you can unleash your AoE abilities and nuke them down. Here you can see me ordering my tank, going from pack to pack, pulling them all onto him as we go. Naturally, I chose Brayflock's Longstop for this, because for some godforsaken reason, this is the only dungeon you can play between levels 32 and 41. It is worth experimenting to see how big you can pull with your tank, given your squadron's stats and levels. The healer AI is a little bit slow, and they generally don't heal until someone has around 60% health, so I normally have my tank pull up to 3 packs and leave it at that. Another cool thing is that your squadron ignores a bunch of boss mechanics, and by ignore, I mean they simply aren't affected by them. Here you can see my squad ignoring the gold lung and hooked burn mechanics from the Orm Veil bosses. While they still get hit, they simply don't care and don't get any of the debuffs, which is pretty cool. It is also worth mentioning that there is no need to panic if your tank can't maintain aggro on everything. Your other squad members tend to be much tankier than they appear, so just make sure that you don't have any of the aggro. Your healer in particular tends to be the last person standing, so just focus on staying alive and dealing damage. This is assuming you are playing as a damage dealer, this is even easier if you are playing a healer or a tank. I have had several times where my tank and co DPS player died, but the healer and I survived. Another pro tip here is, if you are playing as the tank and you are getting overwhelmed, just turn off tank stands. Your squadron has better defense stats than you in almost all of the cases I can think of, and they can tank enemies just fine for a minute or two, so you can focus on DPSing or recovering health. And the very last thing I have to share for this overly long guide, the majority of experience you gain with your squadron will come from killing mobs. Make sure you have your Menfinas earrings equipped if you have them, and take your time to clear out as many mobs as you can without taking too many detours. Of course, ensure that you have food buffs and either a squadron battle manual or your FC Heat of Battle 3 running to maximize your XP gain. Oh, and of course, don't forget, once your squadron members are level 50, you can glam them with any of the gear that's appropriate for their level. Otherwise, they just wear random stuff they got in your glam dresser, and uh, sometimes they can look pretty funky. Assuming you have set up your squad correctly and have gotten comfortable with the squadron controls, this is by far the most efficient way to get from levels 20 to 61. In my original leveling guide, I only recommended doing this up until level 51 and then switching to Palace of the Dead, but if you have Menfina's earrings, you'll get from level 51 to 61 even faster using the squadron. With my maxed out offensive squad, I can clear almost all dungeons within 10 to 11 minutes, which is faster than Palace of the Dead runs with pug groups most of the time, and I can probably optimize even further if I get better at pulling bigger groups, and I can shave off another minute or two. I do strongly recommend this for leveling DPS jobs in particular since you won't suffer from long queue times. Tanks and healers can, of course, just run dungeons with real people instead of these NPCs. And that is all I have for you today, folks. Once again, this video got super fucking long, and that's just the way it goes. As always, you can catch me live streaming at twitch.tv slash alzahard, and if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel for more monotone videos, that would be appreciated. I have more content coming out soon, including me branching out into more opinion-based stuff like answering age-old questions, whether the game is pay to win, who the best waifus are, and how I would fix the housing crisis. Regular guides are coming too, including my power leveling guide for gathering and crafting, as well as a rundown of how I set up my user interface and how I make gil, since those are frequently asked. If you have any other content you would like me to make, please drop a comment down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.